Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to my office here on our Romans Bible study every Monday and Thursday morning at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. You can also find them after we've done them uploaded to the YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316, and the website, thecrosswaychurch.com. And uh, I hope that you would go and listen, listen again. And I really, really hope and pray the Lord would stir your heart enough to share these broadcasts on your social media, under your social media. If you want to help us spread the word, publish God's word as it is written in truth with a righteous effect to it, then I encourage you uh, to stick with us, to learn. God has given us a great uh, illumination in these last days. Those who he's bringing back to faith and grace, which is faith in the cross of His Son, Jesus Christ, and that alone, and you will be beyond blessed. If you truly want to walk with the Lord and not just a church thing, if you truly want to walk with the Lord, you're going to have to learn God's Word as it is truth because uh, the liberation that comes from truth is not just a, a, a thing that happens when you're born again. It happens when uh, you continue. It continues to happen when you continue to trust in that finished work of Christ and refuse to receive any of these new things that men are bringing to the church today. And I want to get right into this today. We only do a half hour in these sessions and and so uh, it, time runs out so quick. So we're in Romans chapter 11. We'll start in verse 9. And again, these are Monday and Thursday mornings at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. Friday mornings at 9 a.m. Central Time, we're teaching from the book of 1 Timothy. And that's in the morning. So join us. If you live anywhere close to us here, Queen City, Atlanta, Texas area, we're in the studio Friday morning. Doesn't matter what church you go to. Not trying to get you in our church. Trying to get you in the Word and to see the truth of God's Word because that's what you need. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to write on your hearts. Praise God. So Romans chapter 11, a powerful, very powerful, Powerful uh, lesson. Uh, many, and I'd say most time, uh, the, the Romans chapter eleven is 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 not understood. It's it's actually rebuked by many many thousands and thousands of preachers. There's a rebuke from them to the Lord by twisting His Word, taking it out of its uh, meaning. And so that's what we're doing, even if we do it in ignorance and we don't know we're doing it. Uh, when we change God's Word, alter God's Word, or try to teach that it means something that it's not saying, then it's our rebuke upon the Lord. And Peter, he got in trouble for that, but thank God he kept going and finally would step into the understanding. And, and some today are finally stepping into the understanding, and I pray that you would be one of those people as we move through this. But the first thing I want to talk about today, and I'm staying right here where we were in the last session just for a moment because it's very important that we understand what Paul is building here toward this church, born again, spirit-filled church in Rome, in Rome is what he's talking about here. And so let's, let's, let's don't forget that. Always remember who this letter was written to, a blood-bought, spirit-filled church church, the church of Jesus Christ in Rome. Don't forget that. It's very important. Uh, so the warnings that come, they're not to the world, they're to the church, just like Revelation. The book of Revelation is, is the first uh, two or three chapters there is, is not to the world, it's to the church. The Lord knocking on the heart, trying to get in back into fellowship, that's to the church. That's not to the world. We use that as an as, as, as uh, something to the world, and, and we can to a certain degree if we're calling the knock on the heart by God the preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, because that is the knock on the door of any heart, whether it's a lost heart or it's a saved soul who's moved out of a place with communion and fellowship with the Lord through simple childlike faith in the cross of Christ, His sacrificial work there alone for only faith in that, can we commune with God? Can we hear and understand properly? And can we walk with God? Uh, only when our faith is in the cross of Christ. And that's very simply defined in the Word that as you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, therefore so walk ye in Him. Hey, think about that. You received Him through faith in what He did at the cross. 
and you're told, commanded to walk in Him that same way you received Him. And when we don't, we're not walking with Him. No matter what we say, no matter how we feel, no matter what the preacher says, the Bible says, if we're going to walk in Him, we're going to have to have our faith in Him, the way it was in Him, what it was in when we received Him. Come on now. Somebody help me. Romans chapter 11, verse 9. This is so important because what we're seeing here, the Bible looks like God's saying that He just puts a spirit of slumber and blindness and causes men to, uh, men's backs to be bent over for punishment and, and, and uh, just horrible things to happen to them that God just put that on them. But we're going to see one word in verse 9 that explains what's really going on here when people are experiencing that kind of life. They just... They they just yeah, they can't seem to get it right. They're just always uh, in trouble. They they can't ever break out. They can't break free from these things, and, and it's like they're blind. It's, now watch this now, Romans eleven, verse nine, and I'm going to remind us all the way through this that God's talking to a a, a Christian church, born again, spirit filled church in the New Testament. But he but a lot of times the Lord reminds us of the people of old, his people of old, the Israelites, the Jewish people. But, and he tells us in the New Testament, the things that were written before, learn from them. Find comfort in them. There are examples, in samples. So we have to look back. And Paul does that often. So watch this. In verse 9, And David said, Let their table... That means what they're eating of spiritually, not, not the, the, the natural food. Let their table, that which they're believing, that which they're trusting in, that which they're partaking of, and you need to understand that. There's only one table for God's people to partake of, and that's the table where it's the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's not what our faith is in today, we're partaking from another table. And watch this now. And David said, even back under the old covenant, because it was the same then as it is today. It's always been one object of faith, a coming redeemer. And faith has to be through the sacrifice of the redeemer. Don't forget that. Watch this now. And David said, let their table be made a snare. That which they're eating from becomes a snare. Watch. And a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense. There's that one word. Reward. See, whatever table you're eating from, you're, you're, you're sowing to, you're partaking of, and, 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 and that Whatever is on that table here referring to the Jewish, the Israelites who had rejected Christ, rejected His way of the cross for righteousness. They were still, we read it last week in, 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 in Romans chapter 10, they, they, they sought after the election but they never found it because they rejected Christ who is our righteousness. He's the end, uh, listen, he's, because He paid the price. He's the end of the law for righteousness. Nobody was ever a perfect law keeper. Jesus had to come and keep the law perfectly and then give his perfect life for our sinful lives. Now think about that. Listen, I don't want to get too far off track here. That one word in verse 9, reward. You, you are going to be rewarded for whichever table you're eating off of. And I've said it through the years, and I'm going to say it again this morning. God is just as faithful to bless those that eat off the table He's provided as He is to reward them with blindness and slumber, listen, and, 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 and nothing but stumbling blocks. That's, that's the reward for partaking of anything spiritually claiming it's from God if it's not the true table, the only table of the Lord. Think about that. The only table is the way of Christ and His cross. Jesus said, and, and again, the table represents that which we're eating from spiritually. Jesus said, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. Well, there's another one of those scriptures we've used for the initial born again experience, but because we've not known the way of sanctification through the Spirit, because we've not known these truths of that we must keep our faith in the cross and all these things that men offer, 
suffer, if they're not pointing us to the cross, but rather doing these things, then God will. That, that's, those are lies. That's a table that the church has eaten off of for decades. Hear me. Centuries. Hear me. Farther back than centuries, we've eaten off the wrong table that Satan through men have crept in among us unawares, offering that which seemed to be right, but the end of that way has been death. That means separation from what God is really doing. So whatever the table you're eating off of, if it's any of these schemes and fads that Satan through men are bringing into the church and all so many, 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 many years way beyond our lives and our father's lives and our grandfather's lives even though there was more truth back in the old days than there are now in the New Testament there's always been major deception. The deception is this that there's somewhere else to partake of that can get you what God is offering other than the table God has prepared for you, which is the table with the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. Faith in that alone. That alone. Not praying through something that God didn't provide. Not doing something with beads or hand motions or, or any other thing that's not in the Bible that doesn't ultimately define your faith being in Christ and His work at the cross alone, my friend, then that's another table. And that's why the church has been paralyzed for years. That's why the church uh, thinks today is more concerned about its rights, its, its rights of, of, of whatever. My, my rights, my rights, my rights. What about your Christian duties? When you get back to the cross, you'll see that Jesus could have called legions. Jesus could have cried out. Y'all are going to pay for this. But he kept his mouth shut and he carried the cross for you and me. And that same mind is supposed to be in us. Nothing wrong with taking a stand for what you believe in your neighborhood, in your community, in your nation, whatever the case may be. But when your rights become more important than your Christian duties, the lust of your flesh has done that and it's going to carry you away to places. You know, oh, you're still going to be just like the Pharisees claiming they, oh, they're right on with God, but you're going to be far from Him. If the fruit of cross, if the fruit of the cross of Christ is not in your life, your faith is not in the cross of Christ. Mm, I can say that again. If you're not growing, if you're not spiritually maturing, not according to what you think, but according to what the Bible declares, that we, we've been called by grace unto the obedience to the faith. Thank God for all the rights you have in whatever nation you live in, especially you and us Americans. Praise God for what God has done. But when your rights become more important than your Christian duties, you're in a world of trouble. And you don't even realize it, but you're being pulled and led by the lust of your flesh, and it's going to take you somewhere. Already got a lot of, a lot of the church there today. Got a lot of the church there today. They didn't, even, they didn't see it happening. They still don't understand it. So... We needed to get that. God doesn't just decide He's going to put a spirit of slumber on somebody. He doesn't just decide He's going to uh, put somebody in a trap or cause uh, them to have a stumbling block. But it's a reward. It's a reward. Because they've rejected Christ. And let me say it again. God is just as faithful to bless those that come to Him through faith in the cross alone and remain in that faith as He is t to allow to reward those who reject that way with traps and snares and stumbling blocks because they're really doing it to themselves. Let's always go back to Cain and Abel. Cain came to the sacrificial place but Cain didn't bring the sacrifice God had commanded. The sacrifice the, is not an option. It's not you as the sacrifice. It's you as the one who from the heart believes in a Redeemer and you prove it by faith in the sacrifice. If your faith is not in the cross, your faith is really not even in Christ. Now I want you to think about that church. 
for many years. I walked in that place because a man who, even a Christian person whose faith is today in Christ, there's going to be growth. There's going to be movement by the Spirit. There's going to be fruit of the Spirit. There's going to be the fruits of righteousness. Not perfection, but growth. Noticeable maturity. Do away with the confession that what God's doing in me can't no man see. Fooey on that. What God's doing in you, he, he, it's God who both works in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. The doing of God's good pleasure is seen because you have come back to the cross and allowed Him now to begin that work in you again. He's faithful to do that until the day of Christ. If you're faithful to trust in what He gave you, which was His Son at Calvary. And I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. He says in verse 10, Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. That's, that's talking about bowing down their back always. It means backing down their back to captivity, to burdens and put, putting burdens on. Bend over and just put it on me. I, I, I mean, if you refuse, go back to Cain. The reason Cain wouldn't bring the right sacrifice is because Cain thought he could work it out. Cain didn't need a redeemer. He thought. But God's says all men need a redeemer. And when Cain had his own way, oh, he brought a sacrifice, but his sac that what he had his faith in proved his faith was not in a coming redeemer. Those who refuse the way of the cross all their life are lost all their life. Those who come to, Christ, come to God through Christ and His way of the cross and then turn through to the deceptions that Satan through men bring into the church unawares because we don't know the way of the cross as it pertains to daily living. And that you and I, the New Testament says, can have the spirit of Cain working on us, in us. Now, don't you think about that. The spirit of Cain Claiming a redeemer, but I ain't going the way of the cross. That was just to get us in. Now it's up to now it's up to us and what we do. No, it's up to what the Holy Spirit does in you, and He only works in truth. He only works according to that law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's why it's so important to know. We were dead in our sins until we came to Christ through faith in what He did at Calvary. In Colossians chapter uh, 2 verse 6, again back to that. If our faith is not in the very work of Christ at the cross, death, His death, without the addition of all these schemes that we're trusting in, then we're not walking in Him. The only way to walk in Him is to walk the same way you walked into Him, by trusting in His work at Calvary. That's how you received him. If it's not, you haven't received him yet. So think about that. And again, as we read through this, don't forget this is being written to a church so the same thing won't happen to them and it gets more intense later. Don't forget that. This is written to you and me as the New Covenant Church, the New Testament Church, so that you and I won't turn away, so that you and I won't start being rewarded with blindness and slumber. Believe me, 99.9% .9 of the church is there today because preachers won't preach the cross. Even a lot of the ones that have come into this uh, illumination of God's Word concerning this still haven't really just surrendered wholeheartedly and said, Okay, God, this is what all your Bible verses are about. Jesus is our Genesis, our revelation, and everything through the Bible has to be re related to the one who is the living word and what he did at Calvary to give us the life of the Word of God, the life of Christ. Hallelujah. If we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, and Jesus is our life to live as Christ, Paul said in Philippians 1.21. For us, if we live, let's get this today. Oh, I pray God somebody gets it and gets it ignited in their heart with the Word of God. If we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, and Jesus is our life. There is no experience of life without experiencing Christ then you can't separate every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God 
unless it's pertaining to Christ and his work at Calvary. If you just don't get that yet, keep asking the Lord to give it to you. Surrender to the very truth of it, whether you understand it all or not. In 2005, I said, Lord, okay. I said, me and the Lord. I said, Lord, and, and I was desperate and I was broken. And I said, Lord, okay, I, I'm beginning to see the cross is the answer for every single issue men have. Not just the, the sin issue, not just to get us into Christ, to save us from our sin, but to get us through this life. I'm beginning to see that. I accept that. The cross is the only answer for all things, for all grace. But God, how am I going to preach this message of the cross the rest of my life? Which in that question proved... I didn't really understand very much because I was still in that mindset I, I lit, to some degree of thinking I had to preach the actual story of Christ hanging from the cross. Nothing wrong with that. But that's the only message. But then God didn't answer me when I was crying out, God, I know the answer is the cross for everything in all of your dealings with men. But how am I going to preach this message the rest of my life? God didn't answer me. He didn't speak to me personally in that prayer session. But that was Him stirring me to show me something, get me to a place where even though I didn't understand everything, I surrendered to the truth that the cross is the answer for everything. Have you surrendered to that place yet? If you're trying to make a name for yourself, you hadn't, you hadn't surrendered to it yet. Because the name you're here to make famous through your life is the name of Jesus. I want you to think about that. And from that day, that day forward to this day, all I have to do is open God's Word and it bleeds red. The living Word, His name is Jesus. He becomes living to me through my faith only in His sacrifice. Not my reading the Word, studying the Word, but my being taught by the Spirit of truth, the truth of Jesus Christ. And what makes Him the truth to me is what He did at Calvary. There's ministers that are listening right now. You're going to have to surrender to that. You're going to have to get beyond what the people think about what you preach all the time, how you relate every chapter and every verse to Christ and His finished work at Calvary. You're going to have to try to get folks saved. You're going to have to try to get folks baptized with the Holy Spirit. But please don't make the baptism with the Holy Spirit what your ministry is all about. Your ministry is going to have to be all about the cross. Thank God for the baptism with the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues and all the gifts that come with, with, with that gift. And the whole church needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But the focus of the ministry is the cross of Christ because that's God's focus. Don't forget it or you're going to be eating from the wrong table and people's faith is going to be in the wrong thing. And that's been the church for years and years held in a place of being paralyzed and only quoting Scripture but not seeing much of anything outside the born-again experience. And that's why we know there are things to be in existence among the church, but because we've not known the way of sanctification through the Spirit, we've not known the only avenue through which God works, being the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And we throw out scriptures of old, Psalms 33 and 4, that says the word of the Lord is right and all His works are done in truth. We throw those out, and when we do, we open the doors wide to every wind of doctrine that wants to sweep into the church and blow us around. But praise God, those days are over. Those days are over. The church is beginning to see and to walk in the truth of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Not all will receive it. Not all of Israel received it. Very few. It's the same way in the church. It's the same way in the church. Very few that have been truly blood-bought, born again, filled with the Spirit, very few of those in these last days are going to repent from going false ways. They've been captivated, captured through the lust of their own flesh, making their own way. And unless they come back to the cross, they're going to lose their way. And that's what the Apostle Paul is going to get to in this 11th chapter. It's, we're going to get to that in this. That's what he's building to right now in this letter. We can't just open a Bible and read a verse. We've got to work our way through. It's called being a student of the Word that we might see a greater picture of Christ, Him being our only way, and that way being the way of the cross.
So if we see here, he says in verse 10, let their eyes be darkened. That's what happens when you won't trust in the cross alone. Peter wrote this in 2 Peter 1, 9, that they'll, we go blind when we forget that we were purged from our old sins. That doesn't mean it's no longer in our head. It means we're not trusting in it with our hearts anymore. We've accepted the schemes and wiles of Satan through men who've crept in among us unaware. It's the whole issue with the hyper-grace movement, and we'll see that greater in this chapter because they've thrown out the sternness the severity of God and they only talk about it and call it all the goodness of God and the goodness of God, my friend. I'll tell you how important it is. Romans chapter 2 tells us it's the only avenue of repentance that when we see God's, when we see God's goodness, if I can get over there with this hand uh, here, I'm having to use my, my left hand. I want to make sure I uh, send you in the right direction. And I believe I was right. I believe it's Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. The goodness of God is, oh my Lord, it's what, it's what has brought us repentance, the goodness of God, so we can relate the goodness of God to what God did in Christ at Calvary because there is no such thing as repentance unless we come to God through faith in Christ, work at Calvary. That's the grounds of forgiveness and repentance. And for us Christians, again and again daily, to turn around and to keep following Christ with the power of Christ. Hallelujah. Where sin no longer dominates our lives, Romans 6.14. So I wanted us to see this main thing today before we move on from this. God doesn't just choose people to be blind, and I know that's false predestinational teaching, but God causes people to be blind, to stumble, and I say He's behind it because God decided what the consequences would be for accepting Christ, keeping their faith in Christ, or rejecting Christ. It would be experiencing the promises of God that are all in Christ, the walk with God that's only done in Christ. That means continuing to partake of the table God has laid there of the body and the blood of Jesus. No, not as the Catholic cult uh, thinks that their relationship with Christ is in the literal partaking of the wafer and drinking the juice and all that witchcraft. No, it's your faith from the heart you're believing unto righteousness, which is the work Jesus provided at Calvary. That's it. Not you adding to that, my friend. Addition to what Jesus did at Calvary is the elimination of God's grace because it can't come through anything you do. Nothing you do. Nothing you do gets you the grace of God. Those people think that doing this is going to get them grace. Those people think that wearing certain beads or whatever is going to get them grace. We're saved by grace and that is a gift from God alone through Jesus Christ and what He did at Calvary. Don't forget that. Or you're, if you, Listen, if you are trusting in anything other than the death of Jesus at Calvary, you're eating from the wrong table. You're blind. You've gone blind. You're stumbling. And, 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 you, and you continually bow your backs to the destruction that can't help but come because sowing to the flesh can only reap corruption. That's what uh, lowing down, bowing down their back always means. And uh, we're, we're just about out of time, but let's read verse 11 because I wanted us to understand God is just as faithful to bless you for eating of the proper table as He is to curse you for eating of the wrong table. And we'll get into that a little later in this chapter because God is very serious and He is just as stern about what I'm talking about as He is good. The choice is us. We have it to make. Verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? And that means have they stumbled and fell completely away with no, corruv with no recovery? God forbids you to think that right here. So those preachers who are teaching that Israel is no more, they've been wiped out, now it's all about the church and forever will be, that's a lie. God forbids you to think that. 
God forbids you to think that. When you see the word God forbid, that means God forbids you to think that way. When you see Paul writing in Galatians 6, 14, God forbid that I should glory in anything other than the cross, that's God forbids you and me to glory in anything other than the work of Christ at Calvary. Come on, that's what God forbids that. God forbids me to boast in what I'm doing. Think about that. Well, we're out of time. I've got to go. I've got to take care of this hand stuff. And and I just had a couple of fingers uh, worked on yesterday, a couple of uh, trigger finger fingers for those of you who know what that is. But I'll be fine. I'm fine already. And uh, and, uh, I just praise God for every one of you who has found the message of the cross the gospel, the way of Christ, which is the way of His cross, the coming back to the place where the Word of God is beginning to be illuminated in your hearts as the truth the Holy Spirit is teaching you and can lead you in and write it on the tablets of your heart. Praise God for the victories in Jesus. Praise God for those few in the earth today who are coming back to their first love, that love that rejoices in the truth. Hallelujah. Uh, Be sure and tune in uh, every Monday and Thursday and Friday in the mornings for our teaching. And uh, don't forget to pray for us. Those of us that walk this path are learning how uh, sometimes it can feel very lonely because you're criticized, you're pushed away from everybody else, people talking about you behind your back, even some of those others who claim to be preaching this message saying that some of us are a little too radical. But I tell you what, that was the story of Jesus. He's just a little too radical and I'm going on with him. And if you'll cling to that nail scarred hand, if you'll cling to Jesus as the crucified, buried, and resurrected Savior, your faith always being in the sacrifice of Christ, you'll find the power of God because that's where the Bible says it's found. Don't forget to sow into the ministry at thecrosswaychurch.com or pull out your cell phones right now. Be a good time and text the word GIVE to 903-231-5950. See you in the morning at 9 a.m. for our First Timothy teaching. And until then, God bless you and stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and Him crucified. See you then.